Hi. Okay, let's talk about some characteristics of stars. Uh, stars are classified a few different ways. They are classified based on their color, based on their temperature, based on their size, what they are made up of, and how bright they are. Pretty simple. So which flame is hotter? Is it the red flame or the blue flame? Let's find out. Red and yellow are actually considered to be cool colors. So where you and I usually think of them as hot, like if we're cooking and we think of that fire, that red flame as being hot, which of course it is, but when we're talking about stars, it's not really a hot color, it is a cool color. Where the white and the blue flames are hot. Um, and stars are actually different colors because of their temperatures. So if we take a look at the pictures uh, we've got here, uh, Betelgeuse or Betelgeuse is giving off that orangey red flame. That is actually cool compared to Rigel, which is very uh, bright white blue. Um, and so that stars uh, color reveals its surface temperature to us. Again, if we just look at a comparison between uh, the stars in the top row and the temperatures across the bottom, you can see those reds are, are much cooler than those whites or those, or those blues. Uh, stars are classified to how hot they are again, and so we have these different classifications, O, B, A, F, G, K, M. And we'll talk more about that in class. All right, size. Now, stars, we know stars are big. Um, and even though they look the same size from here on Earth, when you look into that night sky, uh, you know, you just see the little uh, white dots. They don't look to be different sizes, but in fact, they are. Um, our sun is just an average size star. Uh, there are others out there that are much, much larger. And of course, there are some that are smaller. <coughs> Excuse me. There are a lot of different things that stars are made up of. Uh, those inner layers, of course, are going to be more dense and more hot, where those outer layers are less dense. And we can tell what a star is made up of based on uh, the spectrograph that it gives off or the types of light that it gives off. All of that is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, the brightness of stars. When you're, again, when we're looking from here on Earth up into the night sky, we sort of think of all of those stars as being bright. But the brightness really depends on the size and the temperature of the star. So we actually have these two different brightnesses. We have the apparent brightness, which is how it appears to be from Earth versus the star's uh, actual brightness or absolute brightness. Another word for that is luminosity. That is how bright uh, the star uh, actually is. Now, one thing that we uh, need to understand a little bit about is this Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. It is just a graph where if you look, you can see the luminosity is plotted on the y-axis. The surface temperature is on, along the x-axis. And the diagram just plots stars based on their new luminosity versus their temperature. So again, their, what luminosity is, again, is that absolute brightness versus uh, their temperature. And you can see we get some distinct patterns showing up. If you look at the... Um, at the HR diagram, you can see the main sequence, which is the main stage of a star's life, including where our sun is right now. You can see that those are all part of that main sequence. There are others which are white dwarfs, which are um, hotter in temperature, uh, but not as bright, uh, versus giants and supergiants, which are cool but have a higher luminosity. Um, and so you can see that these clear, distinct um, areas are, are where we can find a majority of the different types of stars. And we're gonna talk more about that in class. Um, 
And that ends this quick little session. Thank you. See you next time.